If you're watching this video, you are on part seven of our seven part series of leadership. I really hope that you've had a chance to see one through six because they kind of built on themselves. Part seven is gonna be very tool heavy, if you will. If you don't mind, click like and subscribe. It really helps us on our YouTube channel to reach more people like yourself. My goal, my purpose, my mission is to help as many private practice owners live the life that they've always envisioned for themselves and try to advance a profession of physical therapy. So you clicking and doing that really helps elevate my ability to do what I'm trying to do. So thank you very much. I'm eternally grateful. Let's get started in this part seven. And part seven, what we're going to talk about here is discipline. If you're going to be respected as a leader, it's because you have discipline. If you're going to be comfortable in your own skin, it's because you have discipline. If you're going to have self-worth and self be self-confident, it's because you're disciplined. And what do I mean by that? Let's talk about the objectiveness of discipline, self-discipline. When you promise yourself you're not going to eat donuts and sweets today and you go on it, you go back on it, you eat a cookie and a Krispy Kreme, you feel bad about yourself. You feel like you're not trustworthy because you couldn't even keep the promise to yourself. This wears down on your self-worth. Now you try to make up the damage by cheating in some other area. This is just natural human nature. When you go through the day and you're committed to doing the right thing all day and staying on course and staying on path, by the end of the day, you're like, yeah, man, I did that. Why? Because you've kept your promises with yourself. By keeping promises with yourself, it better enables you to feel better about who you are. It makes you believe and feel more true to yourself, to your spirit to who you are as a spiritual being. And then you're worthy of other people's trust. If you wanna be worthy of other people's trust and live and act and live a life worthy of that, you have to first be worthy of it of yourself. You have to first be committed to it for yourself, yourself, your own well-being, Not just in physical ways, but in you know mental and emotional ways as well. You're not gonna blow up, you're not gonna be reactionary, you're not gonna be emotional in certain conditions and states. Uh, situations that you walk into, you know, states of being is what I was thinking of. Leadership is about bringing those together who want to be together because they see the value and benefit and the efforts and in the results of their efforts together as a collective. They don't see that they're going to be as well served on an island on their own doing their own thing. They feel that they're going to be better served working in collaboration together with you because A, you have a vision, B, you're trustworthy, C, you're transparent, and, and D, I guess, because you're disciplined with yourself. And part of being disciplined is not just with yourself, but holding others accountable, holding in the policies and procedures, the standard operating procedures. The more you go back on it, the more they're meaningless. The more they don't hold water, the more people that will abuse it. Here's some examples. Like I said, it's tool heavy. Number one, Make sure that every single employee comes on board in your practice the same exact way every time. That's why a learning management system like the one we created back in 2018 and we've enhanced, we're on Meg 6.0 version 6, it gives highly advanced training and knowledge. It gives it in a very comprehensive fashion. It's online, it's web-based, it's 24-7. It has consistency to it. If you bring every employee in in a different way and say different things, you emphasize different things in the policy and procedure manuals, then people are all on your farm working on the same land, but they're all doing it a different way. You have discombobulation, you have confusion, you have misunderstanding, you have misemotion. But if everybody comes in and gets recruited the same way, has the same two-stage interview process, gets the status sheet, not an employment letter. Don't do an employment letter. Do a status sheet when you offer the position. Then they come in and they get their one to two day company orientation training on a checklist. Every item is signed off. Every item is accounted for. Then they go to their supervisor who's going to be their manager and they go through their post onboarding training. Now they go through every single item on the post onboarding training checklist. Then they go to their 10 minute meetings once a month. You're going to be sitting down and they're just going to be able to communicate whatever they want to talk to you about for 10 minutes. It's their time. And they're going to talk to you about their labs or their puppies or their kittens or the book they read or how they feel about work, whatever. It's not a training session. It's a, it's a session time for them to actually communicate how they feel about what's going on in their life. Because you're demonstrating that you're interested in them personally and professionally. Okay, You're disciplined. It doesn't fall out. It doesn't drop off. You're constantly engaged with your staff. Another thing, management action plans. 
What are the things that have to be accomplished between Monday through Friday and did they get accomplished? Is there accountability to that? Statistics, are you measuring their efficiency? Are you measuring their productivity? Are you measuring their quality of care? Are you measuring their incident reports with patients if something were to go wrong? Are you measuring their success stories and testimonials? Are you mentioning it in the monthly staff meetings? Do you have monthly staff meetings? If you don't have monthly staff meetings, then you're not valuing the importance of communication. You're not valuing the idea that you want consistency throughout your practice. Same message. See, when people know that you're the source that they have to go to for information or their manager or their senior and not their neighbor, you're going to have greater consistency company-wide. They're going to have greater confidence in that they're doing things right the first time. Discipline. Discipline with yourself. Showing that you're going to show up to a meeting on time. You're going to be where you say you're going to be when you, when you said you're going to be there. People take confidence in that. If you want to be the world's best leader in your practice, you have to instill confidence in those around you. You're only as good as the people you assemble near you. When somebody else comes in and they start talking me, 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 I, 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 and they want you to bend like a willow tree to accommodate them, you're willing to compromise. You're willing to have concessions. That's okay. But this isn't their show. This isn't their gig, their game. And we tend to feel like, oh, there's such a staffing shortage. Oh, we need a license in a heartbeat. Or, oh, we need a... No, you don't. That is going to be cancer to your group. You're going to lose a good person by hanging on to a bad person. Be disciplined. Be willing to go without. Be willing to accept the fact that you may be losing some money until you get the best and the brightest person to come in and work for you. That's discipline. Don't be so beholden to the green paper with dead presidents on it. Money should not be the driving factor in the decision-making process of your life. It should be integrity. It should be principle. It should be what did I create? How do people feel about being in here? How do they feel about each other? How do they feel about the way the practice is run? How do they feel about where we're going? What our future holds? And how do they feel about their participation in it? That's discipline. Hold people disciplined to the idea that they only succeed after the group succeeds. Messaging. Keep that messaging going in there. But if you haven't created an employment ladder, if you haven't kicked open future doors of opportunity, if they don't see future doors of opportunity, if they only hear the bad news, they only hear demands, you're going to lose them. You're going to lose them. I tell most people, you don't have a recruiting problem, you have a retention problem. You should actually have three folders deep for of people who want to kick the door down and work with you because you're just that good. Transparency breeds trust. When you're so confident that you're doing the right thing the right way all the time, then you can be very transparent with your staff about where you're going and why you're doing it and how you plan to get there. They're going to take such comfort in that. They're going to trust you so much. They're going to give more to you in this practice than they've ever given in any other practice. But it starts with you. Likewise, if you have to flip this around and say, well, when is it time to part ways? This person isn't that person, Brian. They're not contributing to that level. You sit them down. You say, here's what we brought you in to do. Here's the key elements of your job that were on your status sheet that you had to perform. Here's the ones that aren't being performed to that level of acceptability. What can we do together to get you back to practicing in the top 10% of your license. How can we collaborate? How can you give me feedback? How can we coordinate in a manner that helps you, aids you to get to the top of your game so that you're not deficient in these areas of your position? If you've done that and you can look yourself in the mirror and you can say, man, I've done everything I can to help this person get their notes done on time. I've done everything I can to help this person better bring about agreement with their patients, better communicate to the referring physicians, better get along with the front desk staff. And in spite of all of my efforts, it's not happening. And if in three weeks' time it's still not happening, and you've had the proper write-ups, you've done the proper HR, none of this is nuclear physics, everybody. Time to let them go. Time to cut bait. Bring somebody else in. This is a private golf course. Invitation only. That's when it's time. To, not three months. Three weeks. If they can get it together and perform to the level that you've agreed on, then they're a keeper. If they falter and they can't, and you can honestly say you've done everything on your end to make it successful for them, then you have to part ways. Do it in manners. Do it politely. Do it from the flow of, I want you to be happy and less stressful winning somewhere else, and I want to as well. And that's your responsibility. That's being disciplined. 
face the music. Know that you're not gonna have somebody to treat all the patients you have and you may have a waiting list. It's not the worst thing in the world. I know that's how it's gonna feel to you, but it's really not. It shows integrity to the rest of your staff. I remember there was a time when I had to go and let a biller go. I had three billers in my clinic. I had a little biller go, she had a stack of EOBs like this. I mean, it was four inches thick. Just was not posting payments, was not billing secondaries, was not going after the patient collections. I knew something was wrong. I went in early that morning, 5 a.m. I found it in her drawer, I discovered it. I sat down with her, I let her go. My other biller spun his chair around and said, well, that's a good thing, you know, we're not only gonna get this back on track, but we're gonna save in postage too. I said, save in postage? So what do you mean by that? Well, you know, she's been bringing in her presents and gifts for the last year and a half and, you know, using it, the stamp maker, using, you know, running it through our postage machine and sending it all out. I was like, really? Well, you've known this all, like, yeah, I'm not her senior, I'm not her, I didn't. Well, you can pack up your stuff and you can go too. He could not believe it. This biller was shocked, you gotta go. If you're going to condone, you're going to permit, you're gonna allow this person to steal money from the business and create a negative effect on everybody and you were knowledgeable in it and you didn't bring it to anyone's attention, then you're just as much of a threat to the practice as well being as this person was. And I honestly let that person go too. I need people of high integrity around me. I need people who want to see the group succeed, who's not just interested in their own self-interest like this person was. Well, it doesn't bother me, I'm not their manager, I don't have it. So if you see somebody committing a crime, you're not gonna tell anybody? Because that's a crime, that's stealing from the company. Personal integrity. That's what I coach, that's how I train, is for you to live the life that you always envision for yourself. And the only way you're gonna get there is by being true to your heart, true to your soul, true to your personal integrity, and then holding that in on others. I told that person that's just not the type of person that I want in my business working for me. Did he file unemployment? So what? He did, who cares? I'll pay it. But the rest of the staff, the other 35 employees in my company, that word got out. And they respected the fact that I wasn't gonna allow any kind of shenanigans like that go on in my practice. I was only interested and contributing people who are following the mission, following the vision for the betterment of everyone. Believe me, that wasn't in my self-interest. That was in the interest of the benefit of the financial stability and well-being of the practice. In this case, it was that example, but it could have been bigger and it could have taken down the ship. So that's what this message is. That's the end of our seven part series of leadership. I really hope you guys enjoy it. I try to give some real life examples when I can. I really try to point you to checking our website out. We have a free resource tab. It's tremendous. There's lots of great data there for you. Not everything do you have to pay for. I mean, I try to put a lot of free resources in there. We have virtual front desk services, billing services, credentialing services. If I can help you in any of those other areas, that's what this is about. It's about helpful. PTs helping PTs. I'm Brian Gallagher, physical therapist with Meg Business Management. I hope you've enjoyed our series. I'm gonna do more of these. Give me comments below, give me feedback. I really do appreciate it. Whether you agree or disagree, just be respectful, be kind to other, others. Do, do what's right for yourself and others at the same time. Keep that in balance and start each and every day expecting to do well. That's what I say on my podcast each and every week. I hope you enjoy that as well. Take care, everybody. I wish you the best.